Hi everyone, and welcome to a demonstration of TraceGL, visualizing your JavaScript. TraceGL can record and visualize all the code flow in browser and Node.js applications. First I'm going to show you what tracing ACE looks like. ACE is a browser-based code editor and reasonably complex. So let's fire it up and see what it does. TraceGL works by instrumenting all the code it serves, and all code flow is now logged from the browser on the right via Node.js to the UI on the left. The UI is split up into four areas. Top left we have the trace minimap, and top right we see the log of every function called. Clicking on a function will show the call stack in the bottom left and the code bottom right. In the code, all Boolean logic is marked so you can see which code path has been taken. Red is false, green is true. You can see all the assignments, function arguments, and how many types a loop was executed. As you can imagine, logging every single function call can result in a lot of data. And to keep things speedy, the UI renders all the text using WebGL vertex buffers. Let me show you how the tracer responds when you do something in ACE. Here you can see all the mouse move events coming in. And when I'm typing, hello world, you can see each key press being handled. It's almost like an oscilloscope, but for code. Let's zoom in and look at how a key press is processed in ACE. By looking at the minimap, it's easy to see the event cascades. The indentation is the depth of the call stack. Here we have the send text function that gets the keyboard input. And by looking at the colors, you can clearly see the code flow and that it removes a placeholder character. As we move down the list, we see how ACE layers its input processing, and the keyboard event gets translated into an insert command on the editor object. We can see the function querying the cursor position, working with the syntax highlighter, and updating cursor and selections. All of this information is giving you an overview very quickly of what the code is doing. As another way to navigate the trace, there is an as you type search filter for the entire code flow you can search for any text that shows up in the trace. For instance, if I enter send text, you can see what I typed in the editor. And if you want to jump to your code editor at the right line, just double click in the code view. See your code in a new way with TraceGL. Next I want to show you how to debug a large Node.js project. I'm going to use the backend of the open source Cloud9 IDE as an example. Command line has options to ignore files if you're getting too much trace data. Since I'm only interested in the Cloud9 code, I'm going to start it with no lib, which ignores all NPM modules in tracing. Here you can see the backend responding to opening files in the UI. Let's take a look at how Cloud9 processes the console commands. I'll type ls and see what the backend does. Looking at the shape of the flow, you can quickly see where you need to be. Here the command is coming off the WebSocket callback and flowing through the command processing abstractions. As we scroll down, we see the shell plugin taking the call. Here we see the code where the child process is spawned. This is a typical bit of Node.js where you execute something and set a few callbacks for the result. With step debugging, callbacks are annoying. However, with TraceGL you can step into a callback by simply clicking on the function. If you look at the call stack, you see it's rather useless for callback-based code. However, I can simply jump back out to the parent closure by clicking on the function itself. This way we can navigate the closure stack around callbacks, which is very useful in event-based programming. The time shows the delay between the outer closure creation and the function call. TraceGL makes it very easy to see what your Node.js backend is up to. And for people that don't like dark themes, we have a white theme as well. One last thing. Making recordings of your code flow is nice. But wouldn't it even be nicer if you could send them around or attach them in your bug tracker? TraceGL can also trace to a zip file and play it back later. With a trace, fixing a bug becomes much easier.